Here we're looking at the circle of Willis, which is this circular arrangement of blood vessels on the cranial floor. Uh, the circle of Willis is a really important set of vessels because it forms an anastomos around a lot of important sensory structures. So kind of a review of for what my students is AMP1. Here we have the cella tersica of the sphenoid bone, so that's where the pituitary gland is. We have the optic chiasm here. These are the olfactory bulbs and tracts, and there's that ethmoid bone with the crystagalli and the cribriform plate. So you can see these vessels really supply a lot of important structures on the cranial floor. Um, here, I just want to orient you, as I often like to do. Remember that these olfactory bulbs, that's going to be anterior, posterior, which means that this is the left side, this is the right side. So we kind of have a bird's eye view of the circle of Willis. This is important to note because a lot of, for my students at least, our resources will show an inferior view, meaning that the uh, diagrams you see are kind of like from the toes upward. So remember that whenever you're studying the circle of Willis to orient yourself because if you are top down, well, this is the left side, that's the right side, but if you have this view, it changes, it flips your rights and lefts. Now this is the right side and this is the left side. So always make sure you take a moment to do that. Let's start off by looking at the anterior vessels and then we'll look at the posterior vessels. I like to start off by looking at these middle cerebral arteries. Remember that when we have a superior view, this is going to be the left side and this will be the right side. So here I have the left side labeled, and I'll point those out on the right side. So here would, this would be our right middle cerebral artery. Anterior to that is going to be the anterior cerebral arteries. So I have the left one labeled over here, which means this is the right one, and those will kind of go run anteriorly, allow the name to do a lot of the work for you. And then in between those is this small vessel that kind of connects the two, and that's what the anterior communicating artery does. And I like to think this word communicate kind of establishes a connection between two vessels. So therefore it makes sense that this one right here, connecting the two anterior cerebral arteries would be the anterior communicating artery. I've changed up the view a little bit here just to show you some details. Here I have the left internal carotid artery. And remember that from the common carotid artery, we'll have two branches. The internal carotid arteries go inwards into the cranium, and the externals will go more laterally onto the surface of the cranium, uh, the lateral surface specifically. So this left internal carotid artery is actually going to come up like this and connect with what we know as the middle cerebral. So if I were to show you the right side. Here we have the right, here we have the right internal carotid. If we just follow that up, that joins up to become that right middle cerebral artery. This is just a little reminder about the carotids here. This would be the left common carotid. Here's our internal branch. This is the external. The external kind of goes towards the surface of the temporal region. The internal is going to go more inwards like this. And so when we follow that inwards, it makes a lot more sense that this is where it would arise on the cranial floor. Let's now look at the posterior vessels. And for these, I like to start posteriorly and then work my way anteriorly. So here we have the vertebral arteries. And if you can see this hole, remember that from, uh, for my students at least, AMP1, this is what we learned is the foramen magnum. So those vertebral arteries are going to come up through that, that foramen magnum and come together to form the basilar artery. So this would be the left vertebral artery, the right vertebral artery, those come together to form this basilar artery. 
and then the basilar artery is going to break off into two sides, and that's what the posterior cerebral arteries are. So the left branch is going to be the left posterior cerebral artery, therefore this is the right posterior cerebral artery. Then we keep going anteriorly, we're approaching these middle cerebral arteries. We have those communicating arteries. So this is a little bit different from what we saw up here. So a way I like to think of the posterior communicating arteries is that the posterior communicating arteries connect everything posteriorly to the middle cerebral arteries. So it is communicating, it is connecting the posterior vessels to the middle part of this circle of Willis. So therefore this is the left posterior communicating artery and then this one would be the right posterior communicating artery. For those vertebral arteries, here we can see the vertebral arteries. This is the left side running up through these vertebra, okay? And then coming together through that foramen magnum. And when we flip this over, Therefore, it kind of makes more sense. You're putting our people puzzle together a little bit better, and you can better visualize why these two come together to form that basilar artery. So let's do a little bit of review without the labels. This is the left vertebral artery, the right vertebral artery. This is the basilar artery. Then we have the left posterior cerebral artery, the right posterior cerebral artery, the left posterior communicating artery, the right posterior communicating artery, the left middle cerebral artery, the right middle cerebral artery, the left anterior cerebral artery, the right anterior cerebral artery, and then the anterior communicating artery. If I were to tilt this, we could see that this right here is the left internal carotid artery. And then over here, we have the right internal carotid artery. Want to stay up to date on my latest videos? Please hit like and subscribe. And don't forget to check my Instagram page at The Anatomy Gal. See you next time.